five minute medicine depression so let's first see only depression in this video and a little bit of the treatment but treatment of depression will be covered later meaning the, the later part of the video so if, if it is covered in the later part of the video it's going to be a 10 minute video let's get started depression is um, nothing but the following symptoms have to last for at least two weeks to make the dip, uh, make the diagnosis of depression depression is simply put sadness in uh, layman terms depression is nothing but sadness so I'm, i have come up with a mnemonic called ice gaps ice gaps is a mnemonic for depression uh, symptoms of depression okay so the person um, I stands for interest so there is loss of interest for the person so usually he used to be interested in a particular activity and now that activity no more excites the person so it's called anhedonia which is a medical term for loss of interest C is uh, cognition and concentration is lost so there is significant cognitive decline and the concentration and the attention span is very much reduced E for energy the person has no energy nowadays and G for guilt. Guilt, the person just feels guilty about things which he is not supposed to feel guilty. So guilty that the world is spinning. Guilty that the sun is rising from the east and sets in the west. Basically, he is guilty about everything. A is appetite. The person's appetite is reduced. The person may completely neglect to take care of his health and do not eat properly. And so uh, what happens is the person is going to be very lean. But sometimes sadness makes people overeat also. So weight gain is also not very uncommon. Psychomotor agitation or retardation. So uh, the person will be restless in case of psychomotor agitation. And uh, worst case scenario, there is psychomotor retardation where the person fails to get up even from the bed. S stands for sleep disturbances. Sleep disturbances is nothing but... Uh, early morning awakening most of the time there will be insomnia but sometimes there will be hypersomnia meaning the person either does not sleep at all i mean have sleeplessness that is insomnia and hypersomnia the person sleeps so much but the most classic presentation of depression with sleep disturbance is going to be early morning awakening and reduced latency of the REM sleep so the person is just not able to sleep properly and another S is suicidal thoughts. The person is very suicidal. And remember, suicidal thoughts present itself means as a severe depression. And for that, we have to give a treatment called ECT. We see a lot uh, more in detail about ECT in the upcoming videos. So that was about the symptoms. Moving on to the signs. The signs include Varagut fold and the Omega sign. Varagut fold is nothing but a triangle-shaped fold present above the inner canthus of the eye. Omega sign is nothing but Omega-shaped fold on the forehead because of constant frowning and crying. There are certain um, etiological factors which we are assuming causing depression. Biological factors are those with the neurotransmitters. The serotonin can be low. Serotonin is a happy hormone. Happy hormone is low, so the person becomes sad. Norepinephrine is the same thing. Endocrine disturbances, hypothyroidism causes depression. And there is this favorite theory of mine. It's called the Aaron Beck's cognitive theory. Aaron Beck is a person who said uh, there is a cognitive theory, okay? So basically the person has three, uh, I mean the person does not have three things, okay? So what happens is there is, there is hopelessness, helplessness and uh, one more lessness. Comment that lessness in the comments below. Okay, so that is the Aaron Beck's cognitive theory. There is a helplessness, there is a syndrome of hopelessness also. So helplessness is nothing but the person feels like he can never find any help from other people and hopelessness is just he does not have any hope for the future so that's the Aaron Beck's cognitive theory and then uh, moving on to the treatment for uh, depression so depression is a disease you're not supposed to uh, no one is supposed to you know uh, say okay you're just depressed and just cheer up okay it is a disease so we need uh, doctors to treat it we need uh, tablets to treat it all right so a minimum of three to four weeks is necessary to find find out whether the person is responding or not and the minimum duration of treatment has to be six months or the longest uh, i mean the episode duration 
which is the longest for example the person is going to have a depression for two years then the cut off for taking the drug is going to be two years not six months uh, say the person has uh, three months depression and uh, so now the person has to take the drug for a minimum duration of six months so whichever is longer whether the depression duration is longer or the six month duration the cut off of the medicine is longer whichever is longer that much amount of time the person is supposed to take the antidepressant pills so the drugs which are used broadly are uh, tricyclic antidepressants ssris snris mao inhibitors and uh, atypical antidepressants let's see one by one tca stands for tricyclic antidepressants these drugs are going to block 5 ht which is serotonin and ne not epinephrine uh, transporter so what happens is the transporter is going to be blocked so the serotonin and norepinephrine is going to increase to very high levels at the synapse imipramine amitriptyline trimipramine not triptyline are examples imipramine trimipramine so it's like imipramine and tr imipramine amitriptyline and nortriptyline these four come under the category of tricyclic antidepressants there are certain adverse effects of tricyclic antidepressants they are very broadly acting drugs okay so they're going to inhibit serotonin and norepinephrine as far as the importance is concerned but not important stuff or okay or maybe important according to the side effect profile could be its extracurricular activities like anticholinergic activities it's going to uh, cause anticholinergic activities like for instance uh, it has effects similar to atropine i've selected a few so the person can't pee the person can't poop so that's urinary retention and constipation because of anticholinergic side effects benign prostatic hyperplasia and glaucoma are contraindications for using tricyclic antidepressants because it's going to worsen it right which is why I mean, in bph already the person has like benign prostatic hypertrophy so what happens is the person already cannot pee a lot so he's to struggle and uh, giving tricyclic antidepressants simply adds up oil to the flames to make the wa- matters worse which is why we don't want to give it glaucoma also ssris uh, stands for selective serotonin receptor oh yeah before that let's complete the adverse effects of tricyclic antidepressants so it also does an alpha blocking action so because the alpha receptors are blocked alpha adrenergic receptors there's going to be postural hypotension severe side effects can also occur because of sodium channel blockage if the sodium channel is going to be blocked and the heart is going to cause cardiac arrhythmias if the sodium channel is blocked in the brain it causes seizures and it is also uh, a histamine in- inhibitor so what happens an antihistaminic drug so it causes sedation just like diphenhydramine diminohydrinate promethazine cetirizine okay all these drugs are going to cause sedation and uh, tricyclic antidepressants because they are going to act on these receptors they cause similar side effects like sedation moving on to ssri ssris are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors okay so examples of fluoxetine paroxetine sertraline citalopram escitalopram well, these five are very important but if you can remember if you can remember vilazodone vilazodone but yeah ssris have a lot of side effects okay it causes serotonin syndrome as well let's check out what serotonin syndrome in a different video okay ssri uh, these are the examples the adverse effects are there is reduced libido and there is weight gain so it's just like the person is very fat and the person does not want to have sex snri stands for selective norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor so examples include duloxetine venlafaxine desvenlafaxine duloxetine venlafaxine desvenlafaxine similarly uh, the side effect profile are similar to snri side effect profile are similar to ssri it's a dose dependent side effect the hypertension is a dose dependent side effect serotonin syndrome occurs in case of ssri and also snri ssri and snri okay serotonin syndrome snri examples are duloxetine venlafaxine desvenlafaxine side effect profile similar to ssri so there is weight gain and there is loss of libido and there is dose dependent uh, occurrence of hypertension mavo inhibitors are not very commonly used because it causes cheese reaction 
so and also hypertension so we don't want to give mao inhibitors and uh, atypical antidepressants examples include trazodone and nefazodone trazodone nefazodone so these drugs cause priapism mainly trazodone causes priapism so it's just like too much erection so yeah they maybe we don't want to give it well, so basically by and large the antidepressant medications are all fine i mean everything's efficacy is kind of okay so the criteria for uh, you know choosing the drug for the particular patient is based on the side effect profile when I mean, the person has glaucoma we're not going to give them tricyclic antidepressant because that's a absolute contraindication the person is already obese you don't want to give ssris because it causes weight gain again if the person has uh, you know it's a newly married person you don't want to give them trazodone because it causes priapism it's really very weird right so uh that was about the pharmacotherapy of depression moving on to the third part of today's video which is uh extra treatment okay so it's psychotherapy and somatic therapy psychotherapy includes cognitive behavioral therapy so like the person's behavior is going to be focused upon and psychologically the person is primed that it's completely normal Interpersonal therapy can also be tried, but again, CBT is the first line, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. And uh, behavioral therapy, not just cognitive, just behavioral therapy can be done too. And family therapy can also be done. Okay, moving on to the somatic therapy. Somatic therapy includes ECT. ECT is electroconvulsive therapy. So the person has very severe depression, like suicidal tendencies or the person does not get up from the bed, means there is stupor, then we might have to give ECT. That's the first somatic therapy. Second one is transcranial magnetic stimulation. That can be done. Specific brain areas can be stimulated. Third is vagal nerve stimulation. Fourth is deep brain stimulation. Fifth, um, vagal nerve stimulation. Okay, uh, deep brain stimulation uh, is done for chronic and intractable disease, depression. And uh, sleep deprivation can also be tried. So the person is just prevented from sleeping. But however, and the person gets better. That's what they say. But a few people get better after sleeping. So it depends. And again, if uh, the person has um, any other sleep problem, if you're, okay, if we're going to give the person sleep deprivation and once again, the person is going to sleep, the depression is going to recur. That's like the main problem there. So it's not a permanent solution, right? Moving on to the phototherapy a very bright light is given so like especially if the seasonal variation is seen in case of um, the person has more depression in the winter months we're going to give a 1500 to a 10,000 lux light and the person is just going to have the sunlight being sh shown in the ass so that's how we are going to treat so as a quick recap depression we saw the signs symptoms causes of it pharmacotherapy and other psychotherapy somatic therapy so the symptoms could be eyes gaps Ice gap stands for interest, cognition, concentration, energy, guilt, appetite, psychomotor agitation, sleep disturbance, suicidal thoughts. Signs are very good for an omega sign. Biological, okay, the main cause is going to be less uh, serotonin, norepinephrine, and Aaron Buck's cognitive theory. So a feeling of helplessness, hopelessness, okay? And another thing you have to comment down below, or you can check the answer in the description given below. Pharmacotherapy, we are going to use tricyclic antidepressants, SSRI, SNRI is causing weight gain. Mao inhibitors cause cheese reaction, again another video. Atypical antidepressants cause priapism. Psychotherapy is somatic therapy. Psychotherapy, the most important one is CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. Somatic therapy, the most important one is ECT or the electroconvulsive therapy. But what I like is the phototherapy, where we shine light on the person. Thank you.